I'm Bill Korak with the report card at the Navy League's annual Battle of Midway dinner at the Renaissance Center in St. Augustine. The winners of the Francesca Stencil Korak Midway Essay Prize are here to meet the veterans of the legendary battle they just wrote about. Later tonight, they'll receive their awards by Admiral Ferguson, Vice Chief of Naval Operations. Donations for future essay contests can be made to Francesca Korak Scholarship, 406 Misty Morning Lane, St. Augustine, Florida, 32080. Could you recap your experiences at the Battle of Midway for me? I went there in January of 42. Stayed 17 months on the island. There's Midway Islands are made up of two islands. Eastern Island and Sand Island. Sand Island is where the runways are. And uh, we made preparation to be invaded or taken. Right. Admiral Nimitz would advise us every day what was going on. He was getting information from Japan. We had a sub sitting in Tokyo Bay. Wow. And, uh, wow. Then when they started out, then part of them went to the Aleutians, the others come our right, way, right, and slow. there was a code that they broke that definitely said they were going to take Midway. And on June the 4th, we were attacked. And we had ships out at sea and aircraft that taken out there. And uh, our planes left the island. We had Army and Navy both on the island and Marine aircraft. And uh, they knocked out our water supply and our mess hall and strafed everything that they could. And uh, some of the planes would come in and would indicate that they had a gunner that was out dead and they would land and that somebody else would take its place. And several of the planes came and were shot down on the island and they took a bulldozer and buried the Japanese and then first thing you know somebody began to dig them up and take the watches off and their rings and so forth. And, uh, but the main battle was out at sea, but we, we took a pretty good beating that day. Okay. It's an honor to meet you. So, um, what, what did it feel like be, being stuck on the island and not knowing whether they were going to land an attack or not? Well, it was your duty, and of course I was a young fellow, 17 years old. So felt bulletproof. <laughs> Gung-ho, you know. <laughs> you think you could whip anybody. <laughs> it's, so it's... Here we go, face camera. Yeah. But, uh, as the old saying is, I'm glad it's over and went through it, but I wouldn't want to go back through it. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So what did you do for uh, the rest of World War II? Well, I came back to the States and ended up at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, and then uh, went back, went to Hawaii, and we were told that we were going to go to the Philippines. But uh, we had the incorrect guns that they wanted. Some of our men went as observers. And then uh, we left there and uh, went to Guam. Guam was invaded and we followed it in after that and set up our guns and we'd shoot up in the hills. And someday we'd get one, someday we'd get two or three or a dozen that come out of the caves. Right. Yeah. And the war was over, I was on Guam and came okay. back to the States early. Right. I just spent four years in the service. Mm -hmm. what, what, uh, what rank did you get, sir? Sergeant. Sergeant? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for your service, sir. <laughs> Appreciate it.
Thank you. It was great talking to you. I'll give you a handshake. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir.